Are the Ophanim angels? I know what you're thinking. The what? The Ophanim. Let me explain. In Ezekiel chapter 1, we read of the prophet's very peculiar vision. In it, Ezekiel saw four living creatures he later refers to as cherubim. And these angelic beings each had four wings, four faces, hands like a man, and feet that were flat like the feet of a hoofed animal. Then, as Ezekiel watched the four creatures, he noticed a giant wheel that appeared below them. This wheel was the color of beryl, probably light blue and he said that it had four faces in the shape of a wheel inside of another wheel. The rings of this wheel were said to be full of eyes, and the wheels followed the cherubim wherever they went. I know it's kind of hard to imagine, but hang in there. I hope to clarify what I think this looked like. But first, back to the original question. What are Ophanim? Well, the Hebrew word Ophan actually means wheel, and is the word Ezekiel uses here to describe these strange things. Ophanim would just be the plural version of ofen, meaning wheels, plural. Many have suggested that since the wheels, or ofenim, have eyes, they are living beings and are a type of angelic creature. Now, several months ago, I released a video entitled, What Do Angels Look Like?, where I detailed the different appearance of different types of angels in the Bible. Since then, that video has gone somewhat viral, at least for a small channel like mine, raking in over 70,000 views and more comments than I can manage to keep up with. One of the most common questions that viewers asked was, what about the Ophanim? thinking that I accidentally left them out of my list of angelic beings. But I'm not so sure that Ophanim are angels or even living beings at all. In this video, I intend to present two things. First, an explanation of Ezekiel's vision and what I think it was intended to mean. And then secondly, I'll provide a list of reasons why I think that Ophanim are not living beings. Hear me out on this, and if you disagree, be sure to let me know why in the comments below. So what in the world did Ezekiel's vision actually look like, and what could it have possibly meant prophetically? Well, if you follow the passage closely, there is a reoccurring theme. The cherubim turned not in verse 9 and again in verse 12. Then in verse 17, we find that the wheels also did not turn. In addition to that, notice that the wheels follow the cherubim wherever they go. When they touch the earth, the wheels touch the earth, and when the cherubim left the earth, the wheels also were lifted up. Then consider what directed the cherubim. In verse 22 and on, we're told that above the cherubim was a firmament of crystal on which sat the very throne of God. From that throne, God would speak with Ezekiel and give him his initial instruction in chapters 2 and 3 of the book. So the meaning actually seems pretty simple when we put all of these elements together. The cherubim followed the throne of God. As God moved, so moved the cherubim. And as the cherubim moved, so moved the ophanim. When God sought to touch the earth, He moved the cherubim to touch the earth, and the wheels touched the earth also. Keep in mind that at this point in his life, the prophet Ezekiel had just been taken captive by a foreign nation and was sitting in a sort of concentration camp outside of the city of Babylon. It seems that the overall message of this vision was that God was and is still in control. Though we often only consider the things that touch the earth, the things that take place in this world, we must remember that everything that happens on earth is ultimately a result of what God chooses from his throne in heaven. As God moves, so moves the angelic forces of the universe. And as this spiritual battle rages out of the reach of our human eyes, it results in the events that we witness on the earth. 
This seems to be why Ezekiel was so careful to note the fact that the angels and the wheels never turned. The angels each had four faces, and they each had their backs to one another to form a square. They could often change directions, but they never had to turn. No matter which direction they went in, they would always be face forward, because they each had four faces. In the same way, the wheels were said to be a wheel within a wheel. The fact that they were structured as a wheel inside of another wheel would mean that as long as those other wheels were faced in different directions, then as the wheel rolled, it too could change direction without having to actually turn. The wheel within a wheel design would effectively create a sphere that could roll in all directions without turning. The point here is simple, that God never turns or changes his plan, though he often turns or changes direction. Nothing ever surprises God, and nothing ever happens that he did not plan and allow to happen. Sure, God often changes the direction of our lives and the course of events on this earth, but he never turns from his plan. It is being accomplished even when everything seems wrong. We can be sure that God is still on the throne and everything is still going according to plan. So let's talk about the Ophanim, or eye wheels as many have affectionately called them. What are they exactly? Well, the wheels were the elements of this vision that were upon the earth. They stretched from wherever the cherubim were all the way to the earth, and they were full of eyes. I think this means that God sees and cares about what takes place upon the earth. Though events seem out of control, we know that not only is God in control, but also we should be comforted by the fact that he sees and knows what takes place on the earth. The wheels seem to me to represent the dealings of peoples and governments on the earth. Ultimately, God is in control of them, and nothing occurs that he is not aware of. Nebuchadnezzar wrote in Daniel chapter 4, The Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the basest of men. Anyway, the natural next question is, are these wheels just symbolic parts of Ezekiel's vision? Or are they real living beings like the cherubim? Well, we know that the cherubim aren't just symbolic because we find examples of them throughout scripture. Cherubim are found in Genesis, Exodus, 1st and 2nd Samuel, Psalms, Isaiah, and many other books, but these Ophanim are not. In fact, they aren't mentioned anywhere else in scripture besides the prophecy of Ezekiel. This leads me to think that these wheels are kind of like the seven-headed beast in the book of Revelation, or the four-headed leopard with wings in Daniel 7. These were symbolic beasts that had features that were significant prophetically, but were not literal attributes of an actual animal. I think the wheels in Ezekiel are meant the same way. They signify God's moving in the affairs of man and God's all-present sight beholding all the dealings of men, but are not necessarily real, literal, living beings. But some might say, couldn't they be actual beings too? Could they be symbolic and real beings at the same time, like the cherubim? Well, here's why I don't think so. First, as I've already pointed out, they aren't mentioned anywhere else in scripture, so there's no reason to think that they are anything more than just symbolic parts of this vision. But there's also a huge flaw in the theory that these were living creatures, because Ezekiel actually tells us in his vision that they weren't. Notice how Ezekiel constantly refers to the cherubim as living creatures, and he contrasts the living creatures with the wheels. If the wheels were also living creatures, then Ezekiel wouldn't make any sense. Why would he talk about the wheels and the living creatures if both of them were alive? If what makes the cherubim different from the wheels is the fact that the cherubim are living creatures, then the wheels 
must not be alive. Also, notice that the living creatures, the cherubim, had a spirit and their spirit was in the wheels. This might mean that the direction or goal of the cherubim was shared by the wheels, or it might mean that the actual spiritual nature of the cherubim entered into the wheels. Since we know relatively little about the nature of spirits, we can only guess at what is possible here. But either way, this tells us that the wheels don't have their own spirit. So, since the wheels aren't mentioned anywhere else in scripture, and since they are contrasted with the living creatures, the cherubim, and since they don't have spirits, and therefore cannot possibly be spiritual beings like angels, I think we have to conclude that the Ophanim are definitely not a separate classification of angels. What do you think? Do you have a different interpretation for Ezekiel's vision that you think works better? Do you think there is any way that these wheels could be actual living beings? And if so, why are they contrasted with the cherubim who are called living creatures? And why do they have to borrow the spirit of the cherubim? Whether you agree or disagree, let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, before I go, I want to sincerely thank you for watching this video. If you like this content, don't forget to hit subscribe to support the channel and to see more content like this. And follow The Bible Explained on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash The Bible Explained. I really do appreciate your support. Also, I want to remind you that the entire Bible is ultimately about one thing, the redemption of mankind by Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible teaches that all men are sinners and that no sinner can have eternal life with God in heaven because we must pay for our sins for eternity separated from God in hell. That's definitely bad news, but the Bible is all about this one thing. The good news that Jesus died to pay the penalty for our sin on the cross. Since your sin has been paid for by Christ, all that is left for you to do is to accept that gift by faith. If you've never accepted the gift of God by faith, won't you do that today? Leave a comment or send me a message, and I'll be happy to talk to you more about having your sins forgiven by Jesus Christ.